Yeah, so I started, uh, I started a company called VMOps uh, back in August 2008. And we started by you know, making some software for cloud computing. Uh, and uh, uh, back then, you know, cloud computing wasn't actually well known. And it wasn't also clear how we're going to call uh, our product. So we came up with the term cloud stack. And, and, and if you look at some of our early uh, uh, documents, we actually spell uh, cloud stack a little bit differently. It was two words, not one. And at some point, it became one word when you know, the, the industry started to, to accept the term. And now cloud stacks are everywhere. You know, I, was, uh, uh, I was actually at a different company, uh, another startup back then, uh, running some um, uh, mobile uh, computing software. So we, uh, uh, we, we created services for um, uh, s uh, mobile service providers, and that service required a lot of hosting. And I remember there was always a big hassle to try to pre uh, predict uh, load. You know, sometimes we would have too few machines. And if you provision too many machines, it's very expensive, and you, you'd have to get all that, all that rack space, and you have to you know, uh, put up all that capital investment. Then uh, users don't come, so all that investment would be going to waste. Uh, and, and, and that's when, when we found uh, the uh, Amazon Web Services. It was just uh, such a fantastic idea. I figured it was a, a matter of time before other people you know, would want to build a similar type of service as well. So that's where really the, the idea and motivation of, uh, you know, of CloudStack came from, is to enable uh, everyone uh, to build cloud services like Amazon Web Services. No, I think it's, uh, it's, it's great to work on open source project. You know, I, 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 uh, very early on uh, in my career, I, I worked on uh, I worked on Java Virtual Machine, and I remember you know fondly that was really one of my best experiences because even though it was not uh, an open source project in a modern sense, but you know but all the source code was available to the public, and we just got a tremendous amount of community participation, bug reports, um, uh, you know um, documentation, all this ecosystem got built around openness. And when we started you know, um, Cloud.com and we started developing CloudStack, we were pretty sure uh, we're going to go the same way and we're going to follow the same path. And I think the results have been quite phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the biggest difference between uh, an open source project and, an, and a closed source project. In a closed source project, you know, really the only developer community around uh, the project would be people who work for the company who develops uh, the product. Uh, you could still have a big user community, and really the biggest difference between an open source project and a closed source project is the developer community. So because the source code, the documentation, the developer process, the uh, bug database, source code repository, everything is open, it, it, there's nothing that prevents Every, anyone you know from participating in the project uh, no, just to, you know I think the transition from um, whatever the uh, IT data center infrastructure is today to um, uh, cloud computing uh, is, is, is a big transition you know what we're what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring uh, the type of data, uh, data center infrastructure that was developed by uh, really internet companies and bring that infrastructure to you know, enterprises and service providers. Uh, and um, by participating in the cloud stack community, uh, you know, they, they're really going to get a, uh, you know, they, they're going to really going to participate in that transition. We're still at a very, very early stages of, uh, 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 of cloud computing. Uh, but uh, given the speed that you know it's happening, I, uh, you know I have no doubt it's uh, it is going to happen and it's going to happen very quickly. So, so that's I think that that explains why uh, you know so many people are interested in cloud stack and so many people are participating in the community.
Yeah, it was it was actually just uh, yesterday. I I saw a uh, uh, you know I saw uh, one of the engineers here produced a a, 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 a component called DevCloud. It is basically a, 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 a nicely packaged you know all in one cloud stack installation for developers. And I went over and then asked him, um, uh, you know, the way how he actually produced it. Did he produce it manually, or he produced it using a script? And he said he actually uh, produced it with the help of a script that was not a hundred percent automated. So there's still he described there were you know a, a, a few steps uh, that uh, that still had to be done manually. One of the step was. Um, um, uh, you have to kind of go into a to a system and uh, and set the root password uh, manually. And and then you know I came back to my desk and there was actually an email uh, uh, in my inbox coming through the Apache uh, developer mailing list. Uh, it turns out that one of the developers you know, outside of Citrix saw that and he was very excited. He actually went in um, uh, uh, and and actually enhanced the script. He he. He, he, he automated exactly the part that you know that was not yet automated. So I thought that was quite phenomenal. You know, it's a, a, a just the the, the the collaborative nature and of the uh, you know of the community and and the speed at which these uh, these you know these these deficiencies these bugs are getting discovered and, and fixed is a thing that really shows the power of the you know of the open source community. All over the world, you know, we're 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 very popular in the U.S., of course, but uh, uh, we're also um, uh, you know popular in Europe and Asia. You know, there's a uh, you know there's quite a bit of a you know today I saw uh, you know actually Jessica you you sent an email about um, uh, Japanese uh, uh, you know version of the documentation, right? We seem also seem to be particularly popular in Japan, which I'm going next week. So really look forward to it. No, I think it was uh, really engineered uh, from scratch to uh, handle, you know, very very large scale workload and to manage uh, very large scale uh, data center deployments. And really, that's one of the biggest difference between um, between just you know legacy enterprise grade uh, data center and the cloud data center is the scale and. Some one thing that came with scale, you know, once you have you have dozens of data centers and thousands of servers in each data center, is uh, these um, uh, hardware is going to fail. And CloudStack is designed to handle number one that mass scale. Number two, it's designed to handle the failure that inevitably happens uh, in large deployments like this. So you know we have a uh, uh, you know we have customers running. Tens of thousands of uh, computing nodes today, uh, that's managed by CloudStack, spread across multiple data centers, and they're running a very reliable mission critical service that really drives their core business on top of it. And and CloudStack is really able to deal with that because it's it's architected from scratch uh, to deal with that type of a uh, scale. Uh, you know, it, it, it actually, uh, you know, the, the, the failures happen um, uh, uh, quite often uh, in, 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 in large scale, you know, data center deployments. Uh, uh, there's actually a, uh, you know, I read an article uh, done by um, uh, a couple of researchers out of Microsoft, and, uh, and they actually r uh, realized that uh, uh, every year, you know, 7% of uh, the computers in their data centers will just fail, and and this is you know this is this is quite a remarkable number, which is you know not really a surprise if you think about it. If you you know if you run a, even a desktop machine yourself, right, and you'll probably expect it to fail, you know, in a few years, and and, and so so that's why when you have hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of machines in a data center, I mean these these things really add up, and you know it turned out a big. Uh, reason for uh, uh, servers uh, to fail was the hard disk, and and people actually uh, because of that, you know, it's fairly common uh, in servers for uh, people to have redundant hard disks. So instead of have one, 
you know you have multiple hard disks and 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 controlled by you know something called a RAID controller. So when one of the disks fail, another disk can pick up. But as it turned out, you know the second most uh, uh, component that fails it was the actually the the RAID controller. So the the controller itself could also fail. And of course, then you have you know your your other uh, situations like power supply and, and and things like that. And 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 this is just the server. And then when you you know, go beyond that, and you talk about you know, um, uh, failure uh, either with networking or with storage, or your internet uplink could fail. Right? And, and and that's why you know, when today when we uh, help our customers architect our uh, a cloud service, it usually involves you know multiple data centers, redundant network uplink, because really at the end of the day, you know, geographic redundancy is 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 the only uh, weapon that you have to to really guard against uh, catastrophic failures. No, I think it has to be the UI. You know, Cloud Stack is one of the, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really a hardcore enterprise grade or service provider grade uh, data center management software. But I think from the very beginning, we don't just focus on uh, the back end features. We spend a lot of time uh, uh, anticipating, you know, understanding and talking to uh, our customers, which are really who are really system administrators and, and data center operations team, right? To really understand what they need, uh, uh, you know, to to operate and run the cloud, and um, um, uh, uh, really one of the big biggest difference between you know cloud and and and, and legacy, you know, enterprise grade infrastructure is you don't have to you know uh, study a lot to use it. You know, you, in the old days, you'd have to get certified. You know, with with Cisco or with VMware, and really go through a fairly lengthy uh, education process, and just to be able to, you know, get a job and and and, and manage data center. And I think today with cloud computing, uh, uh, the the data center itself uh, is actually getting consumerized. You know, uh, because of uh, software packages like CloudStack. We can automatically manage a fairly large-scale uh, set of infrastructure that's spread across multiple data centers, and through a very intuitive and easy-to-use easy uh, user interface, um, uh, you know, uh, enterprise admins, data center operators, and end users themselves can directly go in and operate on very sophisticated uh, uh, data center infrastructure. No, I think user can expect continued uh, uh, innovation. Uh, uh, you know, we've come a long way uh, in the last four years, uh, really helping uh, our customers and the open source community uh, uh, to help them build uh, you know, data center infrastructure like Amazon Cloud. But uh, this uh, transition to cloud computing is still at its infancy. So uh, uh, the, the you know the rate of progress is 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 as fast as ever, and and we're you know just if, if you just look at Amazon, every couple of weeks I, you know I would get an uh, email from Amazon Web Services about new features uh, getting announced on Amazon Web Services, right? And uh, uh, you know that shows. The, uh, the amount of uh, customer demand and innovation that's really going on in this space. And we're signing up you know, new customers every week. And with a lot of these new customers, I mean, they're putting uh, infrastructure as a service cloud in use cases that wasn't really even anticipated when we initially built the product. So, um, uh, and if you, if you go on to the you know, Apache Cloud Stack, uh, mailing lists, both the developer and the user mailing lists. The, um, the, the you know the amount of uh, um, uh, excitement and uh, possibilities that uh, uh, the the community is uh, bringing up for um, for cloud stack is is really exciting. So I really look forward to you know continuing to evolve the cloud stack technology as part of the community to you know to help address these uh, these new needs. And I
uh, you know, the other day a community member actually talked to me, and he, I thought he had a very interesting use case. You know, they he's involved with a with a company uh, that makes a, a, a lot of network devices. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the leading uh, manufacturer of uh, really uh, networking hardware, right? Mm -hmm. So what they're really looking at is a system that could potentially help them manage all of these uh, uh, networking equipment as it's already deployed in the field. So if you, I mean, if you think about it, you know that there's no reason why uh, uh, cloud stack cannot treat uh, these network elements, you know, as as computing nodes, right? Or even potentially, you know, it, these days, um, uh, uh, you know, if even if you know you branch out to the consumer space, uh, all your phones, all your uh, uh, devices that you have at home, many of these things are interconnected, and they, I think eventually they would all need a. A system like CloudStack doesn't have to be CloudStack, but certainly a system like CloudStack to manage them. Uh, and, and I think, uh, you know, like I said, it's very early. It's not a use case that uh, CloudStack was initially designed to to handle. But the demand is out there, and there are actually people who are looking at potentially, you know, using or adapting uh, part of the CloudStack technology to 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 help them address those use cases. No, I think it uh, continues to gain traction uh, in the enterprise, uh, especially the uh, you know if you look at uh, the type of uh, uh, cloud services as exemplified by you know Amazon Web Services or CloudStack, it, it, they really started uh, in these web companies. You know, companies like Amazon, companies like Google, companies like Zynga. Right and, uh, and 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 all the startups, uh, not just big companies, but nowadays, if you if you start a company, you typically would uh, start by hosting your services on one of the you know cloud uh, uh, services, uh, as opposed to try to set up infrastructure for yourself. So that's where the whole thing got started. Is is, is from these internet companies, and and very quickly, and the, the the first wave of demand that. Uh, that CloudStack addressed was the service providers. You know, service providers have been running a very big business, uh, helping uh, their customers, you know, small, medium business and enterprises to to operate data centers, and and they're very quickly transforming their those data centers into cloud services. And um, uh, 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 what we believe is once um, uh, uh, big enterprises see that um, uh, uh, the, the benefits and when they get used to using uh, you know, those hosted uh, uh, cloud computing services, they would also look at their internal, um, their, their, their internal data center architecture and realize that uh, they can manage their internal data center architecture more efficiently if they build it like a cloud. So, so, so that's really the next big wave that we're, we're anticipating. We're, we're still you know, uh, just seeing some early demand of it. And, and we believe the opportunity you know, in this private cloud space. And eventually, you know, once people have some workload running on-premise on and they have some other workload running uh, in the cloud, they have a hybrid cloud scenario that they need to manage, although it's still early. But it's, it's definitely quite real. Quite a few of our customers have already have it in uh, in, in production, and that's where we really see uh, the world happening. Is uh, is 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 you know the the, the data centers uh, of the world, whether they're uh, run by internet companies or service providers or enterprise, would eventually resemble um, uh, you know the the type of cloud that that cloud stack users are building today. Innovative, uh, production proven, that's two words. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, people use, like to use the term mature. You know, I, I like, uh, I like uh, another term I like is quality and scale, um, you know, beautiful, the UI, <laughs> you know, uh, ease of use. So 